Good morning, good evening, good night. Welcome to another episode of Low Tech Talks with Brad Burns. Today is Wasabi Walnut, What's Hurting My Tummy Wednesday. And this is another Let Ourselves Translate Expert Knowledge podcast. I, I, actually, I actually did have a bellyache last night. I drank too much coffee and I'm sleep deprived and I got the chest pains. Oh, people around me might get worried, but I'm okay. I think it's just gas. But uh, lack of sleep does make it feel like I'm dying a little bit. This fight or flight activation is something that we all take for granted. We know about, but we don't listen to our bodies sometimes. We, like the horse, can run ourselves to death. And instead, I think we should be more like the donkey every once in a while, which will lay down and you could beat it as hard as you want and it won't ignore its instinct for self-preservation. We will. We'll run ourselves until we die or go sleepless and see Adel. I, I'm going to go to sleep. Don't worry. This will come out in the evening working on the progression of releasing these podcast for my all of my two and a half listeners <laughs> i talked to my care partner last night who's my favorite care partner in the world from my old hospital she followed me actually i followed her but she's this shoot i'd i'd say 40s but the way she talks i feel like she's in her 50s but you know black don't crack she was telling me about having her own stomach pain ha being diagnosed with h pylori and having to stop on the interstate the highway every exit just to get out of the car and walk off her nerves and her anxiety they put her on something called reglin which will help your gi system move in the right direction we got 29 feet from mouth to anus and as dr drew likes to say it's all outside of the body because it's an um what they call it? exo ah, exoscopic something like that where it's just as protected as the outside of the body it's covered in a similar endothelium yeah i'll have to go back for this got maybe eight hours of sleep in the last four days <laughs> it's awesome but this medication has the possibility of giving you extra paradmal paradmal <coughs> excuse me <coughs> Jesus EPS extra paramidal paramidal man I'm butchering that but basically Parkinsonian symptoms where you got the shuffling gait and she she was describing it how she's walking like Jim Carrey but not taking long steps like he would. And it was scaring her because like the like they were saying yesterday how ETOH and sniff and ether can make you behave in a way of which you have no control over. And that will add to the anxiety because she was in a she's probably in a specific population that has this reaction and it terrified her. She started looking up the symptoms, which no, the nurse doctor prescribed it. And the nurse who, I mean, if she was inpatient, provided it to her, didn't tell her the the side effects. Well, maybe told her some of the side effects, possibly, but didn't tell her the adverse effects. The worst thing that could happen, which you, you got to tell them. Because she has a presence of mind, thankfully, to go through her sheets, or <laughs> go through her sheets and find out, oh, this is what's happening. And some of this is permanent. It could be permanent. She still notices some tightness in her hip flexors that she associates with this adverse reaction to um, reglin or metoclopramide. But some of them, called tardive dyskinesia, which uh, for our listeners, is it's where your jaw moves in and out and you have these movements of your tongue that you can't control, tics that never go away. And you just, I mean, maybe they minimize, but you're going to have them forever because of your reaction to this drug and I guarantee they don't they don't tell you when they first give it to you because it's the worst thing that could happen it's not gonna it's probably not gonna happen I had my eyes surgically lasered and revisiting the office to check on my 
um, flaps. They have flaps because they slice you open, they suction it off and laser you with cold laser and you smell something that only you can smell. They say they can't smell it, but it smells like your eyes cooking. It's crazy. And they flap it back, squeegee it shut, and then they check on it and make sure there's nothing going on wrong in the, uh, what, keratinocytes, the, the skin part of the eye that covers the, the uh, cornea. And uh, al along my corneal flap, I have what she called a nest of epi, which she was just playing off. It's not a big deal. No, you know, I I'm not even going to tell you the worst thing that could happen. But, you know, I looked it up. And you could go blind in the, if these epithelial, epithelium, epithelia don't continue to move laterally around the corneal flap. If they move, what, distally or medially into the center, medially into the center of the eye, it could cause the need for another surgery, but it's very rare. But you still, I'm, I'm going to look it up. I'm curious. Um, yeah, the strong coffee is hurting my, hurting my belly. But a cool thing. Sneezing gets rid of 100,000 viral cells and goes the length of your mouth to your anus. 29 feet you can shoot that. So cover your mouth. Cover your bug snot rockets. And get yourself some laughter. Because laughter, uh, this, uh, this post said, said it, laughing a hundred times is the equivalent of working out for 15 minutes, which I don't know if that's a hundred times like, ha <laughs> or a hundred times of, <laughs> I don't think they're created the same. I don't think those are the same laughters, but whatever. Go get yourself some laughter. Go do something you enjoy and figure out what's hurting your tummy. And wasabi wana, what's had in my tummy Wednesday. Have a groovy groovy day and avoid that kung fu flu thank you for listening